2012, we were at the New York State Military Museum and Veterans Research Center, Saratoga Springs, New York. Sir, for the record, would you please state your full name and date and place of birth, please? Okay. Irving Siegel. I, I, I was born in the Fox, New York City. It was June 21st, 1924. And did you uh, attend school there? I attended school in New York City. I started off in the Bronx for public school. I went to high school, started in high school in Manhattan. And I started going out to, went to, to uh, the City College of New York. And uh, and I started to look for a job that, uh, you know, things were a little tough at home. Okay. And uh, did you enlist in the service or were you drafted? I, I enlisted in the service. Okay. And let me ask you, what year did you graduate from high school? Uh, I see, I was about 16 and a half, 1924, about, about 1940. And do you recall where you were when you heard about the attack on Pearl Harbor? Well, I think it was a Sunday morning, and uh, I must have been just getting up. Uh, we woke up by the radio, so I never thought about it twice. Okay. And... Uh, you ended up going into the service in November of 1942. Yes. And uh, you went into the Air Force. Uh, yeah, I had, it was what they called the Aviation Cadet Program. It was uh, starting to train for one of three things, either being a pilot or a navigator or a bombardier. So that, was, that lasted about, first, uh, like the initial training was like basic infantry training. And uh, then we, I went to Syracuse University for three months. With that, I took clubs, and then I went down, down to Texas. The rest of my time was in Texas, uh, classification center. I, I, I went to Barbadian School, the Air Gunnery School, and uh, I graduated. And uh, it was about March of uh, 40, 44, I guess it was. Now, now you were a. I, I was a commissioned officer. Okay, so you were commissioned as a bombardier. Right. And what type of uh, aircraft were you assigned to? What type of, of unit stateside? Uh, we went into, uh, after, after graduation, we went for three months. We were, formed a crew with other, with, with the air gunnery and navigators and all that. We flew three months in Texas for training, formation, flying, stuff like that. And uh, what else that was assigned to Bob Group in England, and it was uh, B-24s. Okay. So, so you trained on B-24s stateside? What, pardon me? Uh, you trained on B-24s? Yeah, we trained on B-24s with the goods for, for, for combat training. Okay. Now, when did you go overseas? Went overseas. was a couple, about three months after the start of the training. And uh, did you fly over? Yeah, we flew over. We stopped at the, up in Canada, and then we stopped in Greenland, and in Iceland, and then we went up into North Ireland. Okay. D did you have a brand new aircraft that you brought across? We brought across a brand new aircraft, right. We, have, we thought it would be assigned to us, but it wasn't, you know. Okay. And once you landed in Europe, what happened to you next? Landed in Europe. Uh, we was, we did some training in North Ireland. Okay. Actually, it was like Britain or Great Britain or, you know, possession. And, uh, and then, then we got assigned to a bomb group, which was in, the, actually the name was Bungay, Bungay Italy. Excuse me, Bungay, England. And uh, which was, that was the bomb group we were assigned to. Okay. And, and uh, I flew with the bomb group. I flew eight missions with, together with our group, our bomb group. And then I was taken off the ninth mission to fly what, what they call practice, practice bombing. They were, they were testing my ability with the use of the bomb site. And, uh, the rest, and, and unfortunately, my crew got shot down that day in the, over a German target. And, and then I was without a crew. So for the rest of the time of, of 30 missions, I flew wherever they needed to be. A bombardier were actually could handle a nose turret gun uh -huh. also. And, on my 15th mission, I was with, with the crew I was flying with. We, we went, went to the German 
target, Lone Germany that time, we just dropped our bombs, and as we were leaving the target, we, were, you know, we got hit by anti-aircraft fire, which was always severe in those places. And uh, we weren't able to maintain our altitude, and we started uh, losing altitude, we threw a number of heavy objects, guns, and stuff like that. And as we were crossing, just coming out, across the Daniel River, or something like that it was, we got hit by anti-aircraft fire, and that's actually when we got hit by aircraft, by anti aircraft fire, fire. And we threw out, like I said, a number of things. We tried landing at an emergency field in Belgium, and then there was a change in the wind or something that ramp, and we weren't able to, to make a proper landing. The pilot tried to go up, go around again, but we couldn't do it on two engines. And we crashed in a muddy field at the just outside of the, this landing field. And the plane caught fire. Two engines caught fire. And uh, three people were killed in the crash itself. I got out okay to the top and I was followed by the flight engineer. And the two of us started running. We heard a cry for help. And it was the co-pilot who was trapped by the frames behind him. He couldn't get out. We ran back to the plane and we broke a window. The plane with his harness, his parachute harness. We pulled them out. And uh, the navigator had gotten out after us, the third person. But he was badly burned and he fainted. And so we picked him up. After he was lying by the plane, we picked him up and grabbed him away. And just about that time, the fire engines, the fire trucks from the, from the airfield came and they put out the fire what was there. Wow. And, uh, and then after that, they sent people for about a week to a rest camp, in other words. And then I went back and I finished my, like I said, it was 30 missions altogether. 30 missions, wow. Yeah. Now, what, uh, what was the bomb group you were with? It was the 446, 446 bomb group. Okay. And the bomb group was famous because they led the D-Day invasion of the aircraft. Yes. Now you were with the 8th Air Force. Yeah. And whereabouts exactly were you stationed? Were you stationed the at... The area was Norwich. Norwich? England. Okay. And you flew all your missions out of Norwich? Yeah. All right. And uh, were you ever wounded at all? No. Did your plane have a name? Well, the first, the first, the first plane that I had a name with my crew, we called it Old, Old King Cole. Old Our King? name was Cole, C-O-L-E. Okay. Old King Cole. And that, that plane was shot down in the... I was shot down with the crew that and I missed. The ship. Okay, and the entire crew perished in that? No, no, no. As I said, three people, three people were killed. The rest became prisoners of war. Oh, okay, okay. All right. And uh, now your other missions, you said you flew on all different aircraft wherever you were no, needed? Yeah, different aircraft wherever they needed with different crews. I, never, I, I wasn't assigned to a crew anymore. Okay. But, uh, you know, for the rest of the missions. All right. Now. When did you complete your 30th mission? My 30th mission, whether I completed it. Well, I came home in the spring. I guess it was about the winter of 40, or early spring of 45. It was about the end of 1944, early 1945. Okay. I came home on the leave. All right. And uh, most of your bombing missions were they, uh, were you bombing uh, like factories or, or oil fields? Well, at one time we bombed the submarine tents, at other time we bombed the airfields, and the other times uh, oil refineries, you know, basically military targets. Okay. And uh, I, I'm sure you were hit with flak quite a few times. Flak was very bad, especially around German cities. Mm -hmm. What about uh, German fighters? I never saw a German fighter. A lot of times when we, were, when we went on a deep penetration or German penetration, at that time already, at that time of the war, we had uh, fighter escorts a lot of times. All right. And uh, are, are there any uh, missions, any particular missions that stand out in your mind more more than any others? Well, the one I crashed the bus was out there. Sure. And then uh, a number of times I went to a place, it was Nuremberg, Germany, where they had, uh, it was surrounded 
circled by about 400 anti-aircraft cars, and the anti-aircraft was very bad at that time. So then you were going up to the target. Well, you could see it was just a black screen hanging in front of you, which was all the aircraft exploding, the anti aircraft fire uh -huh. exploding. And so you learn how to cautious. They have feeling about going through that, you know. It's very seldom that you came back from a mission without any damage, a little bit of damage. But not serious enough to make you, you know, go down, let's say. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, you came you came home in the what was it, the spring of I came home on a thirty day uh, you know vacation, let's call it. Uh -huh. leave, a thirty day leave and then the, I reported to Atlantic City and at that time the war in Germany in Europe that is ended and uh, they came out with a program of uh, a point program for this, they started the discharge, because they didn't need all that aircraft and all the air stuff. But I, and uh, you had a choice, you could be made in and go out. I had enough convoy points, in other words. I think it needed about 90 points, which took the amount of time you were in the service, the amount of time you were overseas, and whatever decorations you got, so forth. So once in a while, I just decided to get out, because I didn't want to take a chance on going to the uh, Pacific for, let's say, you know. Sure. And, uh, and I got this charge, which was in June, 45. All right. What uh, rank were you when you were discharged? First lieutenant. First lieutenant. Um, when you were in Europe, did you, what did you do when you had time off? Did you get to go to London or any of the... I went to London. I had like a weekend there, so I went to London. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was it. I mean, otherwise, somehow time the, uh, there was a... Well, town of Bungay, where uh, they had, the, you know, it was the town people lived there, and they had stores and all those things. I never really went in there, but some of the guys they went a lot of times. They went to took a truck, you know, army truck, took them into town, and uh, they had talk with the people talking and all that. There, they had beer and so forth. So I don't know. Mm -hmm. How were you treated by the English people? Didn't have much to do with them too much. They're very nice men. Met some people, you know, and, uh, okay. whatever. It was nothing special. Uh-huh. Did you see any uh, <coughs> USO shows while you were over in England? No. Did you, by chance, uh, ever m meet uh, Jimmy Stewart? He was no. with the 8th Air Force. No, no. Knew about him and all that. Uh-huh. And, uh... I was so glad Dylan also got lost with us. Yes. Now, you ended up uh, getting out in June of 1945. Yeah. Whereabouts were you discharged from? Uh, for the Fort Dix, New Jersey. <laughs> All right. Uh, one thing I wanted to ask you, when you left uh, Europe, how did you get back home? Okay, home on a boat. It was, uh, you know, uh, what are these boats? A, a troop ship? It was a, a steamship, you know. It was a, like a passenger steamship which had been drafted. In other words, it used to be like people take on tours and stuff like yes. that. Yes. So it was more or less of a passenger type of ship, you know. And then we about uh, six, maybe six in a room on, ha on hammocks or... Uh, they let their, there wasn't real beds any, you know. They had to put six six people into one room, which usually was a cabin from. Uh-huh. Now, when you... And we had this escort, you know, the destroyers or something like that. It was a convoy going back. I see. Was there any kind of celebration when you pulled into New York? No. It was nighttime, and uh, everybody ran for telephone to call somebody at home. Uh-huh. Yeah. And once you were discharged... I don't care they took to... Uh, after you were d discharged uh, at Fort Dix, you went home. Yeah. And did you take any time? Let me say this. We, we, when I came home, uh, we got off the boat and all that. You know, I was on a 30-day leave. I was still in the service. When I, then when I reported back, I mean, you know, we had this in Atlantic City, actually. And then we went to Atlantic City, and the hotels were all taken off about the service. I see. And uh, I got discharged actually from Atlantic City, I think it 
was because that's what, where they had the auditorium. We met there and so forth. So on. when you were discharged, did you make use of the 5220 club? Yeah, I think I did. Oh wow. Well, no, actually, when I was discharged, I went. Uh, my next door neighbor, a woman, uh, she was a counselor in a camp, a girls' camp, and uh, nearby was a boys' camp, and they needed counselors, and so I went away for uh, the eight weeks like that, being up in the uh, the country mountains of New York. Oh. And then when I came home, what did I do? What did I do? Well, I was working on an odd job. I worked on the textile line, and then there was a place where they made these. Fancy boxes for uh, for jewelry and, uh-huh. and, and uh, what else? And you said you went to work for the post office. Yeah. After you had had your own business, uh, the food business. Yeah. Well, it was about ten years before I went. I was after discharge before I went to work at the post office. I was working on things. And uh, did you re- retire from the post office? Yes, I retired from the post office. I took uh, credit for my army time and uh, the government service at the post office. And uh, what else? And then I used to, well, I was in the post office season. I worked part time in, in this, uh, the retail line, you know, like on a Thursday or a Friday or something like that. There. Yes. I got married in 1946. Oh. And how many children? I had two boys. And, uh, and is your wife still living? No, she just passed away this past July. Oh, oh, I'm sorry to hear that. And what was your wife's name? Helen, H-E-L-E-N. All right. And you mentioned you were prompted to do this by your granddaughter? Yeah, well, she, there was an article in this paper, the, the uh, Bodhi, I think the name is something like that, there, about uh, this gentleman who was a pilot who was flying planes before he went into the service. Yes. And then he enlisted it. He was 95, I think, now. Yes. And uh, so she took that out of the paper. She says, why did you call up and And I said, you know, she said, because she picked up and it me. In other words, I never spoke about these things. So, uh, so I said, all right, I'll call. We'll see what it is, you know. And, and well, I'm, I'm, I told her I was in touch, in touch with you. And, and she says, oh, and I said, but then you didn't call back right away. She said, so maybe, you know, I wasn't going to be. But then you called me that Friday afternoon. And, 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 uh, and I told her that the, we made an appointment to talk today, so she was feeling happy, I guess. <laughs> well, I'm glad you called. Um, did you make use of the GI Bill at all? Yes, I did for a while. That's when I got involved more or less with this uh, retail line of food and all of that. And this was down in the market there. And I, I, when I got like a small salary, they subsidized that or another something like that. Yeah. Uh-huh. But it lasted about, it was less than a year, you know. And uh, so in other words, the guy, whatever it was, like, I mean, he, he got paid for training or something or like that. And it was a retail line. It was involved with my, my wife's family also. So uh, and I, I went into business to like two, two occasions. It didn't work out too well. organizations. Well, when I first, when I was the Bronx, I joined the, what well, I think it was the Jewish War Veterans. And then we moved to the after a number of years. You know, it was very hard getting the department at that time. And then after a couple of years, I was working in Brooklyn and then we, uh, I moved to the airport there and he, he gave us an apartment. My wife and I are there. And uh, what else? 
and I used to work. I didn't go to that thing. But uh, right now, like I'm a lifetime member of the Veterans of Foreign War. I see. But I don't partake in this. I just watch. I pay the dues. And, mm -hmm. and we paid it a certain amount. And they made you a permanent veteran. I mean, then you're a member. You didn't have to pay dues anymore. I see. Did you uh, join the 8th Air Force Society? No. No, I didn't join any of that. Okay. Uh, did you attend any kind of reunions uh, for oh, I always wanted to, but like I explained before, it was hard for me to do that game first. It was, uh, I, I didn't like flying, period, anywhere. Uh -huh. Oh, I understand. <laughs> and, uh, well, it was, then, like, it was usually on the weekends, like I told you, my family became like Sabbath and Sorry, it was like two boys, and, uh, you know, we had to change our ways, my wife and I, and all that and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, the Saturdays were involved, so a lot of, so that left me out of uh, any of the trips and meetings and stuff like that, you know what I mean? Sure. And, and as far as eating goes, food like that. Did you uh, stay in contact with anyone you were in the service with? Yes, uh, likely he did. I mean, it wasn't the, uh, one of the gunners, Paul Kelly, his name is, lives out in Idaho. Oh. And, uh, what is it? And then, oh, he tried out of I joined the, uh, well, we have a group, the bomb group, you know, in other words, the 446 bomb group. And uh, I joined up, I sent in my two so entirely here, but at least I never got to go to reunions. Uh -huh. He found out about it through the magazine, the newsletter that comes like four times a year. And he called me up. And he found out it was a prisoner of war and all that. He came home. It was a rough deal, he said, when he was a prisoner. Uh -huh. And uh, told me about these three guys that were killed. And, and uh, the others were all POWs. And he was in touch with some of them. This is a bit And so we talked to one another about two or three times a year. Oh, good. We had coincidentally, we both had the same birth page on the 21st. So we were always in touch at that time. I see. So, and, uh, he was, he had been sick, you know, going to the VA out there, only, like here, in the, we have the VA right here in the New York City, where you can go to, but he has to travel about a hundred odd miles sometimes. Yeah. But that, that's not the extent of uh, my touch with them, so. Okay. How do you think your time in the service changed or affected your life?
called us. And thank you so much for your interview. And uh, please stay on the line. I'm going to take, take you off speakerphone.